As we're closing into Black Friday and end of year sales, I do think this is the best time to enter at PV as most of the items are going to be on discounts. And I just wanted to throw out a quick guide as how my recommendation beginner at PV setup is. It may not be the cheapest or apply to you, but the goal is to spend a bit more upfront to get reusable, optimized gear that will last you for a while. We will be going through each equipment one by one and I will tell you the reason why I picked them. Spoiler alert, this is my own setup that works for me and you are free to switch things around or have a different opinion. I'm just mainly sharing my personal route for your information only. So if you're gonna roast me, roast me lighter. Before we begin, let's briefly explain what the system does and the reason why I choose this setup. So first off, this system is basically going to support DJI Digital Video and Analog Video system. And as for the radio links, it's going to have 4-in-1. Basically, you're going to support FR Sky DA D16 Futaba, just 4-in-1 system and also Express OLRS. It will contain at least one 1S Tiny Whoop for our indoor practice, and it will also have a three inch FPV drone that basically you get to take outdoors to like to do a more aggressive flying. And this system also contains two chargers. Basically, you're gonna get one that is dedicated for 1S charging and one that is dedicated for 2S or above charging. So 2S basically to 6S for this one. And we're gonna dive into each piece of equipment one by one so I can explain more in detail. The first up is the DJI V2 goggles. Obviously the V2 will support DJI digital system which often refers to DJI Air Unit, Cadex Vista, Rankin Lynx or even O3 unit but, but since you're getting the V2 and as the V2 has an AV input you get to add an external analog module to the goggles. So now this goggles becomes a very versatile goggle that supports both systems. I don't want to say this as this may trigger some hates, but my personal opinion, getting the V2 might actually be a cheaper analog setup even if you are planning to operate strictly analog only and not use the DJI system. This is based on if you are going to try to purchase a top of the line analog setup like getting an Orca or a Factshark HDO series and some of them you might need to even purchase your analog module separately, which is at extra expense. So why not just spend one money to get two systems yeah, instead of spending two money to get one? So of course, you are, can also start with just the DJI V2 goggle and upgrade it to support analog later along the way. Just know DJI digital FPV drones are a little bit more expensive because it's digital, right? So once you're ready to upgrade, all you need is to get a digit adapter and an analog module. For the analog module, you will have the choice of the TrueD, Wildfire, SpeedyB, Fusion, or the Rapidfire. For details step-by-step -step upgrade tutorial, you can check it right here. But if you just wanted to start with ultra minimum budget, you can start with any cheap analog box goggle. They will all work, but generally just know these will not last you very long. Next up is the radio. Talking about radios, we will first will need to decide the radio protocol. And the most widely used radio protocols for FPV in my opinions are going to be Express LIS, TBS Crossfire, and FR Sky. If your budget is very tight, my recommendation is to go with a radio that has a built-in internal Express LRS module. This can be easily identified by the listing, which the listing will often say Express LRS on top of it, or ELRS, or it, sometimes they may even print it on the radio saying ELRS right here. But if you have a bit more to spend, my recommendation as what I'm doing right now is to get a 4-in-1 as an internal module and adding a Express LRS external module on the back. The 4-in-1 basically covers FR Sky DA, D16, Futaba, and many other less popular protocols. And I just like my stuff to cover a wide range of stuff in case I need it in, in one day. But Express LRS is still going to be my main driver. To decide which one to purchase is completely up to you. Once the protocol has been decided, we can start choosing our radio. Frankly, choosing any radio that runs on OpenTX or HTX should give you a similar result. But my recommended radio for beginners will be Radio Master TX12 or Azoro. They are very similar, just different form factors. All you need to choose is to see if you want one that has a built-in internal ELRS module or a 4-in-1. 4-in-1 generally also can be identified as multi. If you've chosen an internal ELRS module directly, then you are basically all set. 
but if you wanted to choose the 4-in-1 or multi then you will need to purchase another external express solar as module there will be many options out there for you to choose from but just make sure to purchase the correct size for your radio the TX12 will have a micro size bay. Basically, this is a micro size bay. I don't know why they just name it micro. There's no like big, large, small, big, but it, this is called a micro bay. And the Zoro will have a nano size module bay. The micro size bay is bigger like this and the nano is smaller. So basically, this is actually a nano size external receiver. What I did is I added a micro to nano adapter to it. So this is another option that you can consider. So basically you just put the module in like that and put it in like this. And then you are covered. You are going to be 4-in-1 and also Express Solar S cover. Of course, there are going to be some firmware that you might need to load and which if you wanted to know how, the link is going to be right there as well. But if you do not have extra money to spend, just stick with the Express LS internal module for now. And in addition, something worth to mention is mostly any radio from cheap to expensive will work with a PC simulator. So you're really covered. If you're not sure the radio you want will work with a PC, just ask at the comment section. I'll probably try to confirm for you. Next, the fun part is to pick your quad. And if you're using the video system I recommend it as DJI with the analog module, then obviously you are now open with so many options. You can choose drones from DJI Digital or even analog. Although digital is very appealing, my recommendation if you're completely new is to still start with analog first as it is cheaper to practice with and cheaper to replace. And then once you are confident enough, then that's when you upgrade to digital. For the quads I would suggest getting is a 3-inch freestyle FPV drone or and also with the tiny loop as a combo so basically getting two drones as for the radio protocol you just you can just choose express lrs or four in one if you want that but express lrs is still better the three inch is for you to practice outdoor on your flight day and the tiny loop is for you to practice anytime you want in house my recommendation for a three inch will be the darwin baby a pro if you wanted to save the most money as i believe that might be the most cheapest on the market and if you want a slightly better a little bit kind of like better one then probably pick the happy model crux 35 and for the one s tiny loop i really like the happy model mobula 7 for most bang of the buck for durability and flight performance and another option is the beta fpv meteor 65 pro for performance but do know this one may not be as durable of course if budget is not an issue you can certainly start with DJI digital right away the options for the three inch will be emacs baby hawk 2 hd happy model crux 35 hd and for tiny loops i would still suggest staying with analog because when you put like a digital system on it it's going to be very heavy and it's going to be a little bit harder to fly and plus you're going to crash a lot with this so might as well stay with analog Next, we'll be talking about batteries, which we often refer to as LiPos. For this setup, you will be dealing with two types of battery. One is called 1S battery and one is called 2S plus battery. Just remember 1S and 2S plus batteries are two different animals as the construction and charging method is different. And we are not going into detail as it's going to take a whole video to explain how it works. Instead, I'm just going to give you which one you need to buy to pair with the quads I recommended above. If you have any questions, please ask. For the 3 inch FPV drones, the Darwin Baby 8 will run on the 3S LiPo and the recommended capacity will be you can start from 300 to 600 milliamp. For the rest of the quads that is going to be in the three inch category, probably most likely they are going to be running on 4S like this one. So the crux is going to be on 4S, it's this one. And the recommended capacity is going to be around 450 to 600. Yeah, it depends on if you can find them, but generally three inch, 3.5 inch, that category is generally going to be around 4S right now. For tiny oops, if you decide to go with the Mobula 7, then the LiPos you will need will be the PH 2.0 LiPos, which the capacity go, can go from 400 milliamps to about 720 milliamps. And all you need to make sure is to get this, this correct size for your battery tray. So mostly the GMB family will work. And if you decide to go with the Beta at PV Meter 65 Pro, then you will have to go with the BT 2.0 battery, which you will only have the option to go with the 300 mAh one because the battery tray only fits this one. 
Also worth mentioning, the main difference between PH 2.0 and BT 2.0 is the plug. As you can see right here, there's a little bit difference. So BT 2.0 generally is a little bit better compared to PH 2.0. Yeah. All right, next is the charger. This is an essential part, but often forgotten by many new pilots. You need a good charger to stay safe, so don't go cheap on this one. As we are mentioning earlier, the difference between 1S and 2S Plus LiPos, they need a different charger. This is mainly due to how the battery is constructed and connected together. Same, not going into the needy greedy as we will be diving into the LiPo charging and the LiPo basics in a separate video for a better explanation. For 1S battery charging, the recommended charger will be the Vifly Wooster 3. You get to charge a BT 2.0 or PH 2.0 type. So basically this is going to work for both setups. And this is currently, in my opinion, the best 1S charger you can get right now if you need to deal with a 1S Lipos. You get to operate this charger using a USB-C cable, a direct input, or you can also just plug in the XT60 from your battery. But generally, USB-C is the easiest. However, do know your power supply will need to be at least 40 watts for the charger to work. So your regular iPhone charger is not going to work. Feel free to get any 40 watt charger from Amazon. But if you just wanted to copy me, I'm using the, I think this is called the Buy Easy. 65 watts i'll leave the link below i'm not sure if it's going to be valid for a long time but basically just get anything that is about 40 watts so it's going to look like this you basically plug in the usb c and the usb other side goes into the charger and you just plug into the power source and this should power it on for 2s batteries and above the recommended charger will be the hoda 6 or the up6 smart charger like this one you can pick either one and the result i think it's going to be somewhat similar because they almost look identical in a sense you will have two ports to charge two lipos at the same time or you can even plug in a parallel board to charge six lipo at one port however if you are just starting up parallel charging is not recommended because i think you need to know some fundamental knowledge to be safe same we'll be discussing this in a separate video so we are done introducing the system and i want you to know this is only one of the routes I hope by sharing my experience, you can at least have a better chance to make a decision that you are not going to regret later. If you have additional questions on why I'm doing certain stuff in a certain way, or you just want me to give you some advice on how to build your own system, please leave it at the comment section. I will try my best to give you that answer. Already, subscribe to stay tuned for more beginner tutorials and happy shopping. See you next time. Bye for now.